Well, good evening once and again, and welcome to Scale Model Ninja. You have to excuse me tonight because my voice is slightly croaky, so I'm not sure how my voice is going to do, but we'll see how it goes. Um, <clears throat> just to answer Lynn's question, this is actually part two because I do a separate program for Warhammer 40k on the Tuesday and that's the Helldrake build. This one is for the Steel Hearts Champion, so it is part two, not part three. So hopefully that'll clear up that bit of confusion, Lynn. Um, she will start at the top, and it's Lynn saying hi, Ross, and hugs. And then you've got Sprue and Glue saying hi, Ross, and Lynn. And it's Sprue and Glue saying again hi, Christine. And you've got Lynn Dipple going hi, Dave, hugs. And you got Cora Pink saying hi Lynn and David. And then there's just me saying hi all, how are we all doing? And then it's still more than Muse headed to work. I'll have to watch later. Well, I hope you do, Muse, and I hope you enjoy it as well. And then Lynn's just saying hi Cora and hugs. It's Ross hugs. Hope you feel better. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Uh, oh, excuse me. Um, so what we are doing on this one is called the Steel Heart Champions. There's three figures. These are from the Age of Sigma. Steel Heart Champions. These are the easy to build ones. At the moment we're doing the one with the big ass sword. So what we're doing is we'll quickly recap what we've done over last week on the Saturday oh excuse me and then we'll carry on and I'll just switch over to my desk cam so then you can get a clear view of what I'm actually talking about if we can get you to do that there we go okay so last Saturday we got the inside of the cloak done the back of the cloak We've got these little legs and some of the detail on the back of the legs done. And we've got the base all stained up and weathered in. So that's ready to get... Got something. Mm. Yeah, don't stick yeah, it Yeah, don't stick it pushing that down. Told you before, don't use that. You have to excuse the wife coming in from the background. Mrs M. There we go, yep, that's better. I can actually see what the screen says now. Okay, so now we've got part of his tabard done. And look at that. So we're going to probably carry on. First of all, we're getting the, the gold base coat down on his armour with his cloak. What I'll be using is the Retributor armour. So, that'll be the first one we're using. Give it a good cheek. There we go. Okay, so, for this I'm using my, I think it's number one brush, I think, if I remember rightly. Yes, number one. So, we're going to just go around the armour, fill it in. And then once we've got this base coat down, we're good. Yeah, I'll start picking out some of the detail. So here we go. So basically, uh, did what's this David saying? Did Christine bring a brew lol? No, she didn't. <laughs> Still not got a fully house trained on that one yet, but I will someday. And you've got Lynn saying, hi, Mrs. M, hugs. So what else have we all been working on out there? As you said, like on the Tuesday, I'm doing the Helldrake build, which is another live stream build that I'm doing. 
Ooh, sorry. There we go. So Tuesday <coughs> at ten o'clock in the evening, I do my help. Oh God, my voice is getting worse. I might even lose it by the end of this. <laughs> I'm doing that. <coughs> Hell Drake, called, which is a forty k Chaos Army build. And that one will be done to sort of fit in with the rest of my Chaos Army that I'm doing. But I do tend to find my Stormcast Army and the Age of Sigma stuff a lot more interesting to build. And that's mainly because I can actually pick out a lot more detail on the items. And we've got Dad has joined us. How's the old uh, lifeboat going? Has that been nearly finished yet, Dad? Considering you've uh, not that you'd be cheating on anything like that at all. You wouldn't do a dream of doing anything like that. But for what I've heard, it could be me I've finished. And Sarah Jane just popped in. Good evening, Sarah Jane. And uh, popped in to say hi and a thumbs up. Watching NASCAR from Pocono. I think that's how you pronounce it over in the old USA. Uh, it's back in the box, is it, Dad? Mm, till Wednesday. I believe you, but thousands wouldn't. <laughs> so how's the old Harrier coming along? Is that nearly finished yet? Or is that another one that's gone back in the box? Because I know how much you're really enjoying that build. Uh. Mm. Uh, I'm just bring it up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Yes, I seem to have a habit of bringing the item working out, working on out of the shop for some strange reason. But we will get there in the end. So, the Sarah is just saying, pronounce Pocono. So, weren't far off. And Sarah Jane just saying hello to Dave. Otherwise known as Spring Loop. That's near enough. This piece, you've got your arm going all done. I do apologize if you can't hear me properly, but my voice is going, which probably some of you will think, Oh, thank God for that, especially the wife. I think that's near, near enough. Let me get you into that. And I think there we go. That was that bit done. Okay, we'll go over <coughs> the helmet on this one and last gauntlet. So that's all going. The same retribution of gold. It's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I think, uh... Oops. Well, this one, this figure, is actually where he's holding his helm. In his hand. 
so I will have to use a skin tone on his head at some point because he's actually got his face showing which means I've got to do eyes I don't know how anybody else out there deal with doing eyes but when I seem to do them they all look as though they're going cross-eyed it's either that or they've been smoking some really weird stuff We'll try and endeavour and see what can happen with Okay. That's the end of it. Okay, there's the other part of that bit. This. Once I've actually finished painting this piece and it's near enough dried out, I will attach it to a stick with a bit of blue tack that way I can then hold it a bit easier and carry on doing the detail of it it's never so easy when you do I do detail parts and everything holding it like this but it's okay when you're doing the base coats and getting everything set out. So hopefully we should be able to do this. This one shoe. It's that bit done. I think we can just keep it there. Uh, do -do 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 -do. Right, good evening to William Rayburn. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I'm sure I'm really saying hi to William as well. As well as Corping, otherwise known as Mrs. M. Okay, so I've just got this last little piece here to do the gold on. That should then allow me to start doing a bit more of the detail work. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of touch up on that one now. So, nobody's mentioned what they're working on at the moment. So, what we're all working on. You think exciting? Uh, working on a little something else at the moment. Uh, what's this about now? Uh, oh, it's David asking Grizzly if she's working on her Indians again. No, nope, I think they went a little bit on for the time being. And then again, the wife does tend to work on about 30 odd different projects at one time. Okay. She's actually cleaning. If I, I work on about 15 different model kits, she works on about 30 different hobbies. Lindy Paul, I'm working on my budget. <laughs> <laughs> now, which budget would that be for? Okay, uh, done down here. Uh, I'm, I'm still painting the stormtroopers. Ah, fair enough. Uh, I'm I'm Sarah Jane saying I'm boring. I am still building a race car. Nothing boring about building a race car. You can get some nice looking ones out there. 
Which race car is it? That's more important. Is it a nice Shelby or Jaguar? Or is it an F1 car? Life budget and bills said Lynn. Nothing boring, boring about your bills, Sarah. I agree with you, David. There is nothing boring about Sarah's bilge. He does some cracking builds. Uh, standard work is very, very high. Puts my work to shame anyway. The skill that you use to do yours. I'm sorry if I keep moving out of camera, but it's I'm still trying to get used to actually bringing myself into it all that time. I'm used to moving. But hopefully Mario's just getting himself used to being in the camera view all the time. I must keep reminding myself. I think with me enough got all the gold sorted out. Yeah. That's a little bit to cover that. Yeah. Where are we now? Yep, just that there. I think we do come on the short. Okay. Now, isn't it? Let me get a bit of. Now, this is all I do when I get pieces like this. Once I've done the base parts, I will get a piece of old sprue, stick a bit of blue tack on it, and then just basically attach it. Like so. That way I know. Hold it while I do the rest of the parts for it. Great. Now I need to just swap over to my aluminium. And this one's actually an airbrush paint. Uh, let's see. Uh, I believe Mike is working on his heli. Sarah Jane saying, I mean, it's all I do. Not wrong with that, Sarah Jane. And we go, Sarah, you do, you do it rather well too. And yeah, you do. You make some very nice models. I do enjoy looking at them myself. And I'm not a civilian person. The vehicles mainly stick to doing military. And this sort of thing. Okay, we're just swapping over to this silver. This one. So we're going to go. On his plume for his helmet. So. What? There's a reason why I do use the silver. <coughs> it's because basically I'm using a clear coat on top of it to give it the red. And I find the silver makes a very nice base because it gives it a right shiny finish. Now 
Yeah, I've swapped over to a 4 over 0 brush because that just gives me more control of where I'm pointing the brush. Gives you that bit extra control so you don't generally run over so much onto the other pieces. Mm -hmm. And here we've got more, we have a little lighting strikes on there. Like that bit there. Oh. And there we go. There we go. That's that hair piece done. And it's good. I think it's a mango. Yep, you can see uh, need a little, couple of touch ups of the gold there. Oops, missed a couple of bits, tiny bits. And, uh, Sarah, goes, Sarah Jones is saying thanks to David, very kind. And lol, I'm not, and Dad's saying, lol, I'm not Sarah, I'm building a Wessex helicopter. Is that the Revel kit that you're building, Dad, in 48, or is it the smaller one? Because I also have a 48 scale Revel Wessex to build. At some point. Yep. Okay, now to add a bit more of a different colour to it, where I've got is metal section here on this helm, which is part of the crest. That I'll be changing to a copper colour. And Sarah Jones going, oh, that Wessex helicopter, okay, I won't tell. Is this the one you started? I do like the way this copper sort of brings out a slightly little different change that is noticeable when done. So Two guards, like so. There we go, and that's got that into that position. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we will that's how we'll get. Oh, that's all dried out nicely. So what we're doing now is we're using a Tamiya Plume Red, and this I would go over on the plume. Very good. Shake up some more. Oh, a little bit in the lid. And go over the plume so it comes up. First coat of it this way. I don't try and put too much on in one go. Oh, 
I will go over this again. I'll give it a bit of a deeper colour. So, but once you put it on, you can't really mess about with it too much. Because if you do, you end up pulling it off. Because it doesn't allow it to, it doesn't take, it doesn't like being messed about with too much, just Tamiya paint for some reason, especially around with a brush. That's one of the reasons why I very rarely use Tamiya paints. Even though a lot of people swear by them, but I think they just mainly use them for airbrushing. I don't. But I think I've mentioned it before, I don't, very rarely do I airbrush anything. Even though I do own three airbrushes that's part of the gold plate as I've done to a bit more touch up to do there so that we need and you need Belcher. The next part is where I'm just doing the rope line there. I'll be doing that in lead Belcher. But where the little hasp is there, the connection, I'll be doing that in the copper. We'll get the lead Belcher done first. Back on that time again. Give it a few minutes to set. Yeah. Top of the hammer to be of the senior. We know that's all part of it there. Dump. So we're doing this top piece in the belcher. I think was that part of. Oh, sorry, no, that's part of the gold. Even I'm getting myself mixed up now. This is one of the reasons why I like doing it this way. If you do miss little bits, you can catch them up. We do this. Oh, that's part of his armor there. I've missed. There we go. Same thing on the inside of that as well. There we just missed a little bit there. On your edge. There we go. That's better. Happy now with that. So. And I'm just just giving it a good look over and see where you might have missed bits, like that little bit there, back I've missed. There we go. And I think that's there. Okay. Now on the actual shoulder plate, there is a head of a line, you can just see here. Now in here, there's like little eyes. Now I normally go over these with part of clear red, because it gives it a bit of a better effect, I think. 
it just makes the eye stand out a little bit more. Like so. And there we go. Alright, just goes in. Ah, plastic monkeys come to join us. Well done. Welcome, plastic monkey. Nice of you to come along. Should be okay now to go over this again. Just to give it a bit deeper red. Right, so. I just like the effect that it gives it with using the silver base. It almost gives you like a candy effect. So you get a nice solid coat with it. In theory, you're supposed to use Dad's favourite colour, Mephiston Red. For the plumes, but I don't. I prefer this method. There we go. So that's that part. So at the moment, okay. Now, as we've used that, we'll get the. I think we'll actually just change the color of the rope a bit. Uh, Do have a wet scene right there. There it is. I'm gonna start doing the rope parts of it in Balthazar Gold. I'll just give you a bit of a break up in time. Give you a little tweak with that one. Is there a pin missing from the back of that? Get in there. That's it. Just to hold the pot open. Okay, just go over this little piece here. You don't really need to do underneath like this but I do sorted once I missed a little bit there there we go <coughs> so yeah that's uh a little bit of it is near I've done, but also inside the helm is eye sockets. I always really like doing that with a little dab of clear red in them. So, just makes the little eye sockets stand out, which you probably won't be able to see very well at the moment due to the camera. When I take photographs of it at the end of it, they do seem to stand out a lot more. It's better. Okay, now on his little insignia, we have a handle, so we need the chrome red. That one, actually chrome red. So I'm 
Bakayım. Okay. Well, that's that. Let me give it a Now, on top of the shaft, we have a bit more gold. Right down here. Boom. Like so, and then just the connecting points between them. So, basically this piece is near enough together. Just need to have a look around this side of it. Yep, just there. And the strap on the back of his helm. I need to sort out to be the black metal. Bit there, I'm wasting the bomb here. Notice that. Oh. Also, one of the reasons why I have baby wipes on hand. How do I do that? I need to run down the top. Clean that off quickly. Sure. Uh. So now we're going to move. Onto his little strap at the back of his helm here, and there's also a buckle just there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use the black, black metal, which is what I normally use for that, which is also again another airbrush paint, but I do find it goes paints on by brush just as well. Just need a little tiny bit of them. So, ah. the helm, do this side of it. Yep, like that, and then what we'll do. There we go. That's this section done. So that's that piece near enough completed. And we'll give it a few minutes to dry off. And then we just put that one to one side, and that's basically ready to glue together. I'm going to do the rest of the pieces. There we go. So we'll just leave that to one side. Yeah, so. So that's all that piece I'm ready to go. There's tiny little bits I've noticed there, but I'll touch them up when I've glued it all together. Okay, now on the legs, we have his face and his hair to do. And again, bringing out the eye detail on the knee pad, which has also got their lion face on it again. So we'll be using clear red again so it's going over and clear it into the eye 
end. Let's drop it in using the tip of the brush. Uh, Nipple saying, looking good, Ross. Well, thank you very much. And John Paul, hi, mate. Welcome to the show. As I said to everybody, that my voice is a bit croaky tonight. Not sure what's caused it. I think it may have to do with something with my hay fever and that lot. But welcome to the group, and uh, I do hope you're enjoying what I'm doing. Okay, now on this one, you'll notice that these, these little fang teeth stand out a lot more. But what I'm going to do, just to add a bit of highlight to the knee pad, I am going to paint them with the silver. Just to bring his teeth out a little bit, his fangs. Or his canines, as they call them. Just add a bit of detail, like so. And you on that side. Same on the paint. So I just bring that a bit more detail. And we need to do this a bit. You can see it a bit better, I think. No, nope, it's a bit small still, really. You can't really see it, it's not really focused on it, but. As I said, when I take some photographs of it, you'll be able to see better of what I've done. Bit of a shame, really, because I was hoping to have to work out somehow of getting the better detail pictures. Let's go in there if I notice that a bit. There we go. So that's that part. Now, with this, we've got his face here to do and the dreaded eyes. So I normally screw up and generally make them look as though they're going cross-eyed or been smoking some really weird stuff. So in this one we're going to start off with basic skin tone is one of the main colours I use. I'm going to give it two or three coats of this on the face. Because you don't really get that good of coverage with most pigment colours. Beige. Up along his hairline. Uh, we've got John Paul saying hi Cora and he's going hi how's it going uh, for me not too bad the rest of the sore throat no, not really a sore throat it's just, just a bit croaky today Woke up with this morning, just can't seem to get rid of it. So it may well be attacking the brandy a bit later. That should hopefully help with the throat. Again, at the back of his ears. Okay, so that's his face sort of toned a bit. Now, hair colour. I'm going to try to go with a lightish brown colour. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look. Oh. Where are we now? Oh, we have got two. Well, that was my bit of painting. Well, that'll do. <laughs> Let's hope this one's not blocked. There it is. Oh, I have to get some more of that one. Oh, oh that 
Oh, maybe we won't use that one. And that one's going to be blocked as well. This one should be right. Finally out of lockdown. Fair enough. The way things are going at the moment with the old chocolate Velociraptors, we all call it. It could be happening again. Bloody really hope not light, but there we go. Off of it. Considering my business has been to get enough of it. Yep. Okay. And give his give him a shandy haircut. Well set hairy colour. Well, what I will do, because I don't generally, once I've done a couple of coats of things, to shade it in, I won't use another colour other than a wash over the top of the face. And I'll allow where the base primer of the grey is coming through on the cheekbones and that lot a little bit. I'll leave that to come through still. But when I go over it with... Something like an Agrax Earth shade. It will generally pick out the face details and then I'll try and get the eyes and then the f sort of like the mouth area. Ooh, not the Agrax Earth shade. <laughs> Uh, oh, bring out that facial features a few bit more, you can see. Now we'll leave that one to dry for a bit, and then we'll work on his big sword. So we've got a fair bit of detail to pick out again here. Uh, we've got to do some more touching up with the gold, especially in this area at the bottom here. Uh, you can get a haircut finally. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people was uh, very happy about having to finally get haircuts. I know in our local town, the hairdressers had their very busiest day, I think, for a long time. That's probably why there's been about 20 other new hairdressing shops opened up in town. Just to cater with all the people that are wanting haircuts afterwards. But unlike most, I don't have to worry about that because I cut my own hair. It saves off with me buzz cutters. Saves me a lot of money that way. Go up on that. Okay. Oh. I told you back there. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Oh. 
that one squeak out. Okay, now on the back here on his main cloak area while we're leaving that to dry a bit. We have his other shoulder pad which we've got to do in Pantor Blue. So we'll do that. And his neck chief as well. So we'll just touch up around his neck there. Because that's all Pantor Blue. So, I think I'll get it posted. Oh, this can get heck on. Yeah, you spring rose. I'll get it posted out next week. What are you posting out, David? Uh, I was tempted to shave it off. Well, it does save a lot of hassle. I must admit. And it does save you a fair bit of money in the long run. When you ain't got to worry about paying for haircuts. You just shave it. Keeps it trimmed. But it... Well, who won? Who won what? Oh, heck. I'll be finishing NASCAR. Okay. So, Lynn's going, who won? And John Paul saying, oh, yay, Sarah. Okay, so now we'll go over. Now that's all dried off nicely. Get the Agrax again. And go over the Hairline a bit. Brush. So just do that over. Quick slap over it like that. So it makes it a bit dirtier and darker. So we spring out the detail of his face. There we go. So, this brings out features a bit more that way than the Agrax Surf Shade. So, we've got his face slowly coming together. Now, the fun part is getting the eyes. That's the one part that takes a bit of doing for me. Let's see. This all you really need to use is a very much tip of the brush. A bit too far over. Like so. Let's use this side where I screw up. Uh, I think I actually got him this time around. Yep, I think so. Okay. Now, we can use a little bit of that. Right. Like that. There we go. And then, uh, what are you going to flick made? Where are you? There we go. Uh, the only reason why I use the right kind of flesh shade is to actually just go over the mouth area and the 
face a bit more. Wash that down. It brings it a more reddish colour. And it just brings out the face a bit more. Don't need a lot of it, just tiny little bits. It can help bring the tone of it out a bit more. And just bring highlight the details of his face. Use a bit. There we go. So I think we'll leave that to dry out. And that's that bit done, I think. Next, we'll go on to his sword, reserve sword here at the back. We need Cantor. Oh, not Cantor, it's the Crone Red again, sorry. So we've got the hilt. Stands out a bit more. Uh, let's see. A parcel coming to you. And we've got a uh, spring really saying, How many cautions, Sarah? Spring is a parcel coming to you, and I have no use for it, so I hope you will. Bowman won. Said Sarah Jane. Larson got a flat on the last corner. Yeah, well, <clears throat> that's what happens when you keep going round corners in the same direction. They only wear the tyres on one side, don't they? <laughs> uh, Linda was saying, "Don't tell, don't tell them, Dave." He was, "Oh well." Sarah Jane's going. Not many cautions, Dave. Springle is going, Sarah, any wall hits? Yes, four, roughly. So you got three, but then one of them decided to skip. Ooh, and you end up with Indian Field. Feel sorry for Larson. Drove so well, only to be puncture and finish ninth. All right. These things happen in racing. Do, do, do. Hmm. Oh, off the camera again. Still keep. Still had to have it of actually bring it too close to me. I'm so used to working up close by my chest when I'm doing things like this. You would have thought by now I'll just change that habit. But I'll slowly work on it and get it right at some point. Let get his belt sorted. That bit. Uh, no, Dave. Pocono is a massive track, difficult to reach the infield. So, they generally, for NASCAR, they just generally use that as a uh, Big holiday weekend, isn't it? Really, for them. Yeah, they take the big camper vans with them and spend time there for the whole weekend. What I've seen of NASCAR. I think that's right. Anyway. 
Seems to be coming together slowly but surely. Don't they run the races all over the weekend for the uh, NASCAR? So you'd like have about four or five different main races held at the same meet at the same time. And here we go. Oh, it's going to be done there. Right, yeah. That's that part done. And down. There we go. I need enough uh, gold again. Yeah, I have actually gone over onto the blue a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Because I will tuck it up a bit easier. That way. I'm not trying to worry about it too much at the moment. As you may notice, I do chop and change to pieces. It's generally giving them time to dry off enough for me to work the next part of it that I want to. Oh, it's all sorted in that one. Yeah, we'll touch up the contour blue on that one. Okay, now for my sword blades, I actually have my own mix that I mix up myself. And this is generally all mixes I do for my exhaust now, not for my aircraft. I'll mix up a different load of colours from like the black, the silver, all the metallic colours, and the gunmetal blue and all that. I'll add it all together and then I'll use it for making the exhaust burn marks and everything like that for the jet aircraft and also if i do make a mix up for my tank tracks anything that's left over just gets dumped into this pot and then used for doing blades and metal like that so it's my own little track mix as i call it It just comes out like that. So very similar to lead belcher, but just a slight different colour. So, five, five past eleven already. Not too bad. Uh, let's see. Sarah goes, "Hey, big weekend. Got F one 
F2, NASCAR races, British superbikes, British touring cars, World Rally from Kenya, MotoGP. That should keep you entertained, wouldn't it? Let's see. I used to watch F1 at one point, but then I got sort of bored of it after they changed too many rules to the British one, I mean, and then you got that. Hypocritical Ponce, otherwise known as Lewis Hamilton. So I call him. Used to like the lad, but not anymore. That's the blade. Solid. Now, on the end of it, there's actually a little tiny lightning strike. So what I'm going to do is I'll fill that with a silver colour. Yeah, just to inlay that a bit like so. I'm not too worried about it going over at the moment because I've got to do something else with that first yet. That one's like that. And then we've got the next one. That's solid. Just the right side of the brush like so, and I should just tie that up a little bit. And then that's all the So that just then tidies up that enough. So just redefines those lines by just going over the edge of the brush. Right. Tidy up these edges a little bit on the back of the cloak. Then we go around here. Well, that's that nicely tied up around there. Also, where we've he's caught it there a bit. That's that all tied up, and that's already so. Where we've got the little lightning flash at the bottom, I'm going to use a clear blue. So, inlay that with clear blue, and it just gives you got a bit too much there.
So that will stand out nicely. So that's that bit done. And then we've got what we've got on the other side there. That's oh, we need the South Sarg Gold next. Uh, yes, well, we have noticed you do like your motorsport, Sarah Jane. Oh, yeah, there you are. Just need a little stick of it. Wherever I put it, there you go. It has to go in the back of there. I'll hold you open. Okay. There you go. Over. And the sword blade and everything. So we should just bring out. A bit more detail on it, I just don't mind going over that the lightning flashes and everything there. So I'll bring them out afterwards. Did you dump? So hopefully when I do the highlight of the silver on it, it'll bring out the little lightning bolts afterwards. Just doing them within the, that area first. So, I think I mentioned it before where when you're handling this Rexbuter Armour Gold, you do find that you wear it thinner down and it brings out like a silver edge to it. And that's a way I'll just leave it like that because it sort of like highlights a worn edge of the armour. So, it does sort of dunk it down a bit. So, like wave. Well, I'm under it there, same as there. It just brings the silver out what's actually in the gold, so it just gives it a worn look, aged look, which I do quite like. I'll push that little bit of the edge there. Let's see that. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. There we go. Just push down that edge. There we go. There we go, that's that bit done. Okay. So now, what we'll do is we'll go over the silver section here. There's little lightning strikes. So just over that front section there. And then on the hilt of the sword. A little bit more silver in it. Like so we're just going to use the edge of the brush again and go over it. it brings it out, little lightning strikes. 
Turn that edge in bits there. I think I'm not the only person that seems to hold their breath when they're doing tiny little bits. I mean, it's something that I've, God knows why I do it, but I seem to hold my breath every time I do really small detail stuff. I'm sure I'm not the only person that does it. Uh, looks like Sarah Jane's off. Take care of all. Seems I need my beauty sleep. Night, night. Well, night, night, Sarah Jane. Take care and thank you very much for coming. I hope I haven't bored you too much from cause you wanted to go to sleep. If I have, I do apologise. So, well, hopefully once I've got this bit done, I will temporarily push it together so we get an idea, general idea of what he looks like. We should be able to drop you onto the front of there, like so, you then go on to Mac, I need to get you to stick in temporarily, like so. Uh, good point. Yeah, there he is. This piece is now all dried up, so it should be to fit him onto the front of him. So and then he will sit uh, it that way around. Pop it the way around. Oh. Yeah, exactly the way around. Might have to just clear that off and pins off a little bit. I've got to do that earlier. Let's get more. Got to clean the pins off. Not stuck in fully together yet, but I'm going to temporarily really get a general idea. As I'm probably going to end it here fairly soon tonight because my voice is definitely going. And it's uh, getting a wee bit sore at the moment. Which it didn't really be. Let me see, give you an idea. There we go. Oh, that's a bit there. That's a bit there. There we go, and we should be able to sit you. Oh, you still not want to go. That's probably why the pain there. Give that a quick clean out. And you. That's how he should look when he's fully done. It gives you a basic idea of <coughs> what he's going to look like before we finish him off. 
but he's coming together really well. So, I think we might just end it there tonight because my throat is definitely getting sore. And I do apologise because I know I normally run on for a bit longer. But I am slowly but surely losing my voice. So I'll just walk back up to face cam. Like so. Move it right down. And. Well, thank you all for joining me. And you know, I do apologise if I've been a bit off tonight. My throat's been a bit playing me up a bit. But I didn't want to. Not come on. So, as one does, you, oh. <coughs> uh, you soldier on and work through it. Well, what's the saying? Thank you very much for everybody for who's joined me, and hopefully, next week I'll feel a bit better. And I should be back on Tuesday at 10 o'clock to do the Hell Drake. Do a bit more on that, carry on with the wings. Okay, well, thanks a lot. And I'll say good night for now.